Here is the summary of the continuous distributions that were introduced in this chapter. There were four of them. The first was the uniform distribution, and here is its probability density function. Here are its support values. Here is its population mean and its population variance. The second distribution is the exponential distribution. It has a single parameter lambda, which is usually called a rate parameter and it has a positive support, tractable mean and variance. The next distribution is the gamma distribution. It is a generalization of the exponential that includes a shape parameter kappa. The probability density function involves the gamma function. The uh, support is again x greater than zero and its mean and its variance are tractable. The fourth distribution was the normal distribution, which is probably the best known distribution of all continuous distributions. It is used heavily in statistics. Here is the probability density function. It has a support from minus infinity to infinity, mean mu, variance sigma squared. The first two have closed form cumulative distribution functions, and the second two do not have closed form cumulative distribution functions. On the other distributions, we hit the beta distribution and the triangular distribution. And finally, the Weibull distribution. They have various areas where they appear in applications. Beta is for random variables that can assume values between 0 and 1. Triangular can be nice for situations where there is no data and you've got to use expert opinion. And the Weibull is another survivor distribution like the exponential and the gamma because it has positive support. Now at this point in the course there is a website that is worth going to because you've seen enough of these distributions. The website you may not be able to read it so I will read it off here. It is www.math.wm dot edu slash tilde lemus slash chart slash udr slash udr dot html and those udrs are in uppercase and they stand for univariate distribution relationships. This is a chart that shows a number all of the distributions actually that we have encountered so far in the uh, material and what this chart does is gives information on all of these distributions. You will see off to the left, here are the discrete distributions up top, and they are, they are listed in alphabetical order. And I will not hover over them because it will move to the distribution, the uh, chart itself. And then down at the bottom are the continuous distributions, again, in alphabetical order. Those distributions that have a square box around them, and I'll come down here to the Poisson distribution, those are discrete distributions. And the, the distributions with rounded corners on them, and I'll go down to the normal distribution, those are continuous distributions. Every time you hover over a discrete or a continuous distribution, it will light up those distributions that are related to that distribution in one fashion or another. So for example, if you come over here to the binomial distribution, I'll have to move just a bit over to the side here. If you come to the binomial distribution, you will notice to the right of the binomial is the Bernoulli. And this n equals 1 right here shows that when you let a binomial random variable have n equal 1, that reduces to the Bernoulli distribution. And likewise, if you add up Bernoulli random variables that are independent and identically distributed, you will get a binomial. Inside of these boxes are properties of the distribution. So for example, m happens to be a property of the Bernoulli distribution and that is the minimum property which says minimums of Bernoulli are Bernoulli. And the P here is the product property and that says the product of Bernoullis are Bernoulli and the X here is the maximum property and that says maximum 
of Bernoulli's R. Bernoulli. If you want to click on any of these properties, and I'll click on this one right here, the minimum property, a proof of that property will come up. Hit the back button. And if you click on any of these arrows, such as the sum of Bernoulli's being binomial, if I click on that arrow, it'll bring up a proof of the result, which is that the sum of Bernoulli's is binomial. Now you you don't have enough material yet to take all of this in, but this is a good diagram to start investigating in in the uh, in the uh, gap here between chapter five and chapter six, because chapter six starts us into multivariate material where you'll start to see how you prove some of these relationships that uh, connect the various distributions.